on the days we have University of Florida to my right your left we have head coach Tim Walton student athlete Lauren Hager student athlete Kaylee Kavistad at this time we'll take opening comments from coach and then we'll throw it out for questions coach yeah well thanks uh, just a great game really proud of the way our team came out played well um, just thought we uh, you know Lauren hitting that home run first thing set the tone really going to run out there and pitch well um, you know, to get that, uh, that top half of the first. But overall, I just thought we played clean, we played very poised, very controlled, our court controlled our emotions. Even after the two-run home run, I thought we did a good job of uh, just bouncing back and trying to get gain the momentum back again. So just uh, proud. Just It's good to, to be able to come out and uh, get that first W uh, under your belt. And, uh, you know, and especially after the way we played against, uh, the way we swung the bat last time against Tennessee in the SEC tournament, we really didn't play very well. And uh, today, just a much better tone set for our team. I thought they really... Uh, did a good job of, of, of playing um, and controlling their emotions and playing about as normal as I think I've seen us play all year long. Uh, and then I took my cap to the ground, but I thought they did a good job, obviously, getting that field, um, you know, get that field uh, playable and, uh, you know, after the amount of rain we had overnight. So just thanks to those guys working hard. All right, we're going to open up for questions. Uh, yeah, Pat Billy Gainesville's son, Kaylee, can you just talk about stepping up and hitting a homer on this stage as a freshman and just what was the excitement level for you to do that? Yes, it was really exciting. I was just looking for a pitch to hit and working on being on time and to help my team out and get to a 3 nothing lead. It felt really good. Uh, Fernando Galena, ES, ESPN, it's a WR on the coach. Uh, how, with the extra preparation, did that really help this time around against Tennessee? Um, yeah, you know, I think, you know, the, the, the thing that we talked about, I, I felt like last time we played, we had a, just, you know, as you go through the emotions of the SEC and the play and the travel, you know, being on the road a couple weeks in a row, and um, and you go in, and we won the first game against South Carolina, and I, I just felt like we kind of just showed up the next day um, expecting to win, and, you know, I don't expect anything different, but I don't think we put the time in preparation-wise to, to really know our opponent inside and out, and uh, this time I felt like our team did a much better job of knowing who we're playing, knowing the pitches that they're doing. We made some significant adjustments at the plate, and um, you know I thought that really helped us out. Yeah, Cliff Brown, Associated Press, Coach Walton, uh, your pitcher, you're actually out hit Tennessee two to one uh, by herself. Uh, is that uh, kind of uh, perspective on what she brings, what she's capable of doing for this team? Yeah, I just got, I just got the chill. I didn't even look at that part of the box score. I didn't even recognize that. I, I, I totally forgot. I think she had two hit by pitches in the, in the hit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's impressive. I mean, for. You know, I think again, as you talk about getting over the hump to, to get back to the College World Series as the one seed, I think that was a you know a pressure relief for our team just to be able to you know to kind of step up and do what we're I guess you're supposed to do. Um, but to, to be the National Player of the Year and to jump back on the stage when everybody's ready to say, "Wow, she's the National Player of the Year," and blah blah blah, and she stepped up, hit a home run in her first at bat, pitches a, a great game, gives up one hit. I thought she answered that call as well of just how how well she's played this year and how well she's prepared uh, to to get on this stage and. And to have her moment, you know, she's she's really hasn't, uh, and she she'd be the first one to tell you, she really hasn't played uh, probably her best game of the College World Series, and for her to step up and really do that today, uh, she answered the the call that we've talked about, she and I, and her preparation. I'm really proud of the way she came out and, and, and got after it. Kyle Fredrickson with the Oklahoma, and uh, this is for all three of you, but starting with Tim, uh, saw on uh, Twitter earlier that uh, Billy Donovan came and, and talked to your team before the game today. Obviously, with him being the new coach of the Thunder. What was that experience like, and, and what did he tell your girls, and what was your reaction to that? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, that's the, the beauty of, of being at the University of Florida and, and the culture that Jeremy Foley, Foley has created for us as coaches. Just, you know, everybody is a, a part of what we do in, in Gator Nation, and I'm really, you know, happy about um, what Jeremy, you know, affords us the opportunity to be around each other. We have coaches' parties, we have coaches' get-togethers, we have coaches' roundtables, just things that allow us to get to know each other. And Billy's a, you know, is a friend of mine, um, somebody I really look up to. Uh, really sad to see him go, um, you know, but I think the, the Oklahoma City Thunder and the, the state of Oklahoma is in for a big treat. That's one of the best human beings that there is in the game of basketball. And um, I, 
I'm glad we got a W for Coach Coach Donovan because he, I think he was like 0-2 in uh, pregame prep talk, pup talk before. <laughs> so we finally got over uh, over the hump too as well. Now for him, he, he spoke my first postseason as a coach ever at Florida. And I mean, he's he's intense and it's it's beautiful. And he's looking, I think one of our players, I won't, even, I won't tell you the quote because I think Lauren will tell you that quote a little bit better of when he's looking into her eyes. Uh, but it was, it was it was awesome. Very, very special. Very, very grateful for him to take his time to do that for us. Well, obviously, it was a great surprise to have such an awesome coach come in and talk to us. Um, you can tell he's been coaching guys for a really long time because he came in and like his volume just kept going up and up and up. And he was like, when he would look at you, like when he made eye contact with you, he was speaking to your soul. Like I felt it, and I was like, okay. But it it was really awesome. Um, he had great things to say to us. Obviously, he's a championship coach, and now he's a professional coach. And so we took his words, and um, it really pumped us up a lot. And we were really grateful for that opportunity. Yeah, it was just really inspirational. If he can't pump you up, I don't know who can, but it was just an honor for him to come in and speak to us at this type of environment. And coming in as a freshman, it just kind of made me feel at home. Well, and Grand Mace, he is in the You guys four cents to push to throw 155 pitches in six innings. When you just keep going deep in the count, deep in the count, time after time, how much do you see that wear on pitchers just having to go through that? I mean, yeah, as a pitcher, you want to throw the least amount of pitches as you can, um, especially because, you know, you got to come back the next day and throw again. Um, I think it's great to work the count. I like to get ahead, and I know that that's mostly what pitchers like to do. So it is a wear on you if you do keep getting deep in the count like that. Chris Harry, Gatorville.com. Lauren Bailey's saying yesterday that, she, that you said how much you wanted to hit a home run. So what, what, after she hit that one last year, that was a monster. How, what did that feel like? I mean, it felt great. Um, I wasn't going up there. I can't ever go up there and try to hit a home run. I, my home runs will come with good at-bats and good swings and good pitches. Um, so I was just kind of going up there looking for a good pitch to hit with two outs. Um, I did a great job with battling a few off there and got a good pitch to hit, and it, it was really exciting. Secondly, you had him given up a, a run in his 32 and two-thirds innings and then hit a home run. What, what's your thought process after that? I just had to buckle down. I mean, I only gave up one hit, and if you leave one ball up, here at the what we call World Series, you can get taken out of the yard. So um, against good teams like this, so I mean, I was just trying to buckle down and get the next girl out. Max Long in Tennessee, and you for Tim, you spoke of the adjustments that that you made at the plate um, between the SEC meeting and, and then this meeting. What were those adjustments? Was it just being more patient at the plate? Well, you got uh, two junior pitchers that will come back next year, so I'm probably not going to say too much about you know what we, what our plan was, but I think overall. Um, you know, we just wanted terrible pitches last time. We, you know, with uh, the two styles, the contrasting styles between Rainey and, and, and Gabriel, it's, it's hard to, to really prepare for the, for the way they throw. So we just went in with a different approach than we did last time. And, uh, and again, I, I didn't want to over you know, overanalyze last game. But our players, every one of them complained about seeing the ball. And we did not see the ball very well at all the last time. And whether that was a tribute to their movement, or at least Anna Gabriel's movement early, or if it was just we just couldn't see on that day if there was something going on with the shadow at the time that he played. But so we just didn't overanalyze that. And I told the, the players that same thing. Like every, I mean, I walked with four different players and they said the same exact thing, and none of them at the you know, different moment. So I definitely knew they weren't you know, conspiring against me. They just definitely couldn't see the ball. Akili, can you talk about uh, your jitters coming out to play on the stage for the first time? And, and Tim, can you also talk about her stepping up the way she did as a freshman? Yeah, well, our seniors do a really good job in the upperclassmen keeping us calm whenever we come in the field. And I played here before, but it's definitely a different atmosphere. And just coming in, I think pressure is an option, so I wasn't that nervous. But at the same time, it's nice to have teammates backing me up and telling me it's going to be okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've talked about this before, Pat, just uh, the, the adjustments that Kaylee's made here over the last probably week plus. Totally different swings, a different bat speed, and, and I think she's finally, you know, I think she's becoming more of a sophomore now than a freshman. She's starting to loosen up a little bit. Uh, seems to be that her swing is actually in a much better place than it was, um, you know, just three weeks ago when she was, you know, she was struggling to get hits and just wasn't generating good enough bat speed. And I thought she, you know, she really did a good job swinging the bat this whole week again in BP. And uh, for that, I think she was rewarded. Chased a pitch early in the zone, early in the count with bases loaded. Um, and the first at bat, the second one, she, she got an elevated pitch and really got on playing pretty well. Coach, were you surprised that Aaron Gabriel was in the niche and they get they went back to Gaffin? You know what? 
No, because that's that's their MO. I mean, they've been doing that a lot. You know, Randy Gaffin got them to this point. She really pitched well at the um, you know last games in the Super Regionals and helped helped Florida State. You know, which was, I think a complete game. So I think their intent was they were prepared. You know, they had um, a coin was in there and they were really prepared to use at least three pitchers. At least what it looked like on paper. Um, I don't think we were prepared. We were prepared. We were prepared, prepared for Gabriel. We were prepared for Gaffin. And we were prepared for the other pitchers as well. Lauren, Michael Kinney on the transcript. Uh, can you just talk about the mindset of uh, this team coming into the uh, College World Series? Uh, obviously, being number one with a very loaded field, SEC heavy. Just what are some of the things that you wanted to see from your team and out of yourself? Um, I think we did a really good job of just staying calm. A lot of us, this is our third time back. And for me, I went out there, it felt a lot different than I had before. I felt so comfortable. Uh, nobody felt nervous. And you could definitely tell how we played. And I think um, us being a number one seed, we just have to keep playing and doing what we're doing to win ball games. Um, just play clean, play good defense. That's what our MO is, is we play good defense. And uh, I think we did a really good job of that today, staying calm and just staying cool like we have been all season. change how you value defense, how you uh, scout defense? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as we as we talked, I think sitting here in 2009, um, you know, sitting on this stage at the end, uh, you know, losing to Washington, we just talked about our overall athleticism has to change. And um, I think the key to that was, you know, defensively, the range of our, of our infield, the range of our outfield. I think the game itself is changing. There's so many good athletes playing the game. You know that you know they, they played in the goal that Whitman made in, in left field. I mean, it's easy to overlook left-handed hitter even slicing the ball. Um, you know that way, just being athletic, being able to make plays when you're supposed to, and um, I think that's you know that's really the key uh, to keeping teams. Um, you, know, you can't give up extra outs at this level. It's it's really it's gonna make it tough on you. Pete with Player College Softball 360. Uh, Kaylee, uh, tell us what it's like to be a teammate of Lauren Ager. Uh, she's almost has 70 home runs, 70 wins in her career. Just to have a teammate that carries you guys as a two-way player and um, and maybe how you've grown in that appreciation throughout the season. Yeah, Lauren Hager's awesome. Um, she's a, definitely my, one of my role models, and I look up to her hitting-wise. But to be able to pitch and hit at the same time, and she's National Player of the Year, it's kind of exciting to play with such a great teammate. We have time for one more question. Mike Strange from the Knoxville News Signal. Uh, ladies, not that you needed any extra incentive at this point, but did the Tennessee five game winning streak against your old get mentioned at all? I had no idea until you said it right now. I had no idea. I mean, we had a big winning streak as well, so we just kept doing what we were doing. You meant five games against us. Oh, oh. I thought you meant they had a five game winning streak. I was like, I knew about uh, it. Just in I case you know. <laughs> All right. If there are no further questions, Coach Flip, I want to thank you for your time. Florida will play tomorrow at 6 p.m. local time. Thank you. Uh, Tennessee will be up next. Okay, now for Tennessee, we got coming up. Megan Gear, M E G A N G E E R, and Rainy Gaffin, R A I N E Y G A F F I N, and Karen Weekly, which is the Tennessee COVID coach. And Maurice, back to you.
Okay. Uh, at this time on the dais, we have from the University of Tennessee head coach Aaron Wheatley, student athlete Rainey Gaffney, student athlete Megan Greer. Uh, at this time, we'll take general comments from coach, and then we'll open it up for questions. First of all, congratulations to Florida. They played an excellent game. I think you saw the benefit of their experience um, defending national champions and having only lost two players. Um, I think, we, as we just talked about in our locker room, not a lot of experience on our side, and I think that showed a little bit today. Um, a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes by us that uh, Florida definitely took advantage of. And I know our girls are disappointed, um, but I think we'll come back stronger on Saturday. All right, this time we open up a question. Once again, raise your hand and someone bring the mic back. Mike Strange from Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, Megan, could you talk about facing a pitcher like Lauren Hager? Uh, pretty tough day. You, you got the only hit. Talk about the ball you hit and also just what she's like pitching. Um, well, going against Lauren, she's obviously a great pitcher. I mean, she just got um, the national pitcher of the year so um, props to her and she came out and she always hits her spots really good so um, it was really key to try and lay off of the pitcher's pitches and hit um, my pitch, my pitch that I'm good at so that's kind of what I did. My bat was that I saw she was getting ahead a lot so my second bat came up um, and I decided if the first pitch was going to be there I was going for it. Maxwell and Tennessee and for, for both players it's a long road back now to the, to the winner's bracket to the championship series. What's your mindset? Just uphill climb. Right. I mean, no, just to uh, take every game one game at a time and just uh, one pitch at a time. Try to get back to Tennessee that we know we are and just, you know, uh, execute and just get things done. You know, just throw it back. Just be ready for it. Um, I think now that we have one game under our belt, I know Karen is talking about the experience, and I agree that it showed that Florida had a lot of experience and we didn't on the field, but I think now that we have that one game under our belt, we know what to expect. Um, so I think we'll come out a lot more prepared next time. Are there any other questions at this time? Uh, yeah, can you just talk about um, Hager getting that homer in the first inning, kind of putting them on top and getting them on that and going? Um, yeah, she's a great hitter. Um, it was two out, uh, two strike uh, at bat, two outs. You know, she just attacked a good pitch. I left it up a little too much, and she attacked it. So I give her props to that. She was attacking all day. Uh, for Rainey and Megan both, I, I, my hunch is that neither one of you feel like this was a typical Tennessee game today. Uh, just talk about that and uh, what, what that feels like now and what you do about it. Uh, like Megan said, you know, uh, we've had one player on our team who's been in the World Series before, and I just think we got a lot of nerves going on the field. Um, we didn't show up like we usually do, and I just think, like Megan said, with that one game under our belt, now we understand what it's like being on the field, what it's like playing that many people, and just uh, let it go and learn what it's like every other game that we play this year, and just to play Tennessee softball. Yeah, I think we just kind of need to. Um relax and play our game like as if we were playing at the home field or something like that, um, not to get too overwhelmed and not to try to do too much, like um, just to go up and put a good swing on a good pitch instead of going up and trying to hit home runs or, um, you know, get the game winner. Just do what we've been taught and um, let the outcome take care of itself. Are there any other questions? Yeah, people for a cause. College softball 360, uh, Rainey, uh, and I, I know you've been playing out, uh, outfield and pitcher even before before college. I was watching when you went back out to right field in the middle of the game, came back. You guys have done that a lot this year. I'm curious what your mindset is when you, when you have to change gears, and even um, when Aaron's pitching, are you are you looking at the hitters? Are you thinking when I go back in, I got to remember this about this hitter, or are you just playing right field at that point? I'm just kind of curious how you transition. Um, overall, I would think that, yeah, I, I have a tendency to watch hitters. It's just kind of how I've been raised. I'll watch hitters no matter uh, where I'm at in the field, just watch them, see what they do, uh, see kind of how they hit, how they swing, the pitch calls. Um, but just going to right field, I just mainly focus on, like, I still cheer for Erin, focus on her, um, um, having her back, you know, when we switch back and forth. By this point, kind of used to it, but just, I mean, try to keep that same mindset that it's just part of the game, just keep uh, in the zone, uh, attacking the zone, and 
just go back and forth. I'm so used to it now that it's just it's part of the game. Yeah, uh, Karen, can you just talk about the pressure Florida put on the ladies with their, with their running game? Yeah, they certainly did. And, um, you know, we, we've been pretty good at executing the double steal and defending that, and it's something we work on every day in practice. In fact, sometimes as coaches we joke that we work on it a whole lot more than it's ever run against us. So it was surprising from our perspective, and I'm sure from our players' pers perspective, that we didn't defend that better. Um, but Florida has some, um, you know, they're more of a speed team now. Like Tim was saying in the press conference yesterday, that's something they've really worked on. And we just didn't execute. We just didn't make the plays. Um, and then uh, with the squeeze bunt, um, you know, we weren't uh, unprepared for it because we know that's something that they might do. And we feel like when we have Rainey on the mound, we're in a great place to defend that. And I think that's a play that, you know, any other day we're going to make. And we just didn't make the play. Sometimes those things happen. All right. If there are no further questions, Coach, I want to thank you and your student-athletes. Uh, Tennessee will play on Saturday at 11 a.m. local time. Thank you.